I'm Sean and I love music. Um, I took a wee break over October so this is going to be a bumper edition of what's spinning where I cover what I was listening to over October and November so strap in because there is a lot of music to get through in this episode. So first off, what I've been listening to on Bandcamp and Tidal streaming services, and there's not that many releases, This the past two months have been kind of dominated by physical releases, but there's been a couple of really good, really, really good releases on Bandcamp that I think you should definitely check out. Um, first of all, there is um, Hoplites with, um, excuse my pronunciation, Antitimorioi Mene. Antitimorial many. Um, it is a Greek word, apparently it means antibiotics. Um, Hoplites are brutal, grinding, super raw black metal from China. Um, I do believe it's a one-man project, which is your my favourite kind of raw uh, black metal band project. Um, there's hints of thrash and death in there as well. Um, it's a, a wee bit progressive, like a slight like undertone of progressive and like angular um, song structure and angular rhythms and stuff, which is really, really, really good. Um, I really loved their last record, which was uh, Trothis Omeni. Um, um, they, they have a habit of um, putting everything in classical Greek writing, so it's difficult to get a gauge what's being said. But no, no, this is absolutely brutal. Really, really, really good. Really, really thundering raw black metal. Next up, another new discovery for me, uh, Canon and Fieber with um, their uh, EP, uh, U-Bootsman. Um, this is catchy as hell, uh, melodic death with a slight twinge of black metal they're, they're like there's there's wee bits there's some tremolo guitar some growl behemoth style vocals but i would always put it more into the kind of death than i would the kind of purely black metal um there's also hints of industrial i, I hate mentioning uh ramstein whenever i talk about a german band club but their shadow is just so long that there are hints of like ramstein particularly in the uh the, the track kampf und storm like um, that it just sounds like a ramstein song at first a really good ramstein song but then it kicks into like in the blackened and death metal bits and they're really really good but no these guys are super super catchy i really really enjoyed this release and i'm going to check out their their, pre their previous releases as well um for context they're like a far less harrowing and far less grim 1914 so um, if that sounds like it's up your street then absolutely go check them out they're really really good i released kind of a wee bit out with my usual black death doom kind of triumvirate um alluvial with death is but a door um, i can't even remember why I, I i checked the record i think it's because of the front cover the front cover is like really catchy like, like it's really really you just want to know what it sounds like but um, they're great they're pounding progressive tech deaths um they're really thundering really really brutal um i checked out their video for bog dweller which is an amazing song title which immediately hooked me in but oh it's, it's just so immediately heavy and dead devastating and just really ugh, it's, just, it's just really really great pounding death metal and um, it's heavy and it's angular as sin and I, I i love it i think i'm going to check out these guys a lot a lot more that was um, alluvial with death is but a door absolutely check it out really good a no-brainer, surprising absolutely no one who knows me, it is of course the remaster of um, Infinity by the mighty, the majestic, the mirthful Devin Townsend. Um, it's a stellar, progressive metal album with a real pop rock sheen. Um, this is absolutely an amazing album. I'm actually working right now on an episode of the albums that made me for Infinity and when he mentioned that he was remastering it and then it came out on streaming service I was like absolutely I, I just I just need to get this. It's such a fundamental pillar of my musical development and um, really really good. Can't say enough good things about about Devin Townsend. If you haven't checked him out already check out Infinity. Brilliant record. And we're into the first of many, many, many <laughs> vinyl releases for October and November. Um, not everything's brand new in this, it'll be stuff that I've gotten over October and November, but we'll start out with um, with an amazing, an amazing album. Um, this is Everything Is Alive by Slow Dive, um, one of my wife's all-time favourite bands, and they've really grown on me as well. It's sumptuous and um, immaculately crafted shoegaze slash kind of electro rock with really ethereal vocals and like almost a wee bit of like drone happening in the background as well as it's really really amazing the album has a real somber and kind of wistful feel to it um, and i really really dig the vibe of of the album so um it is beautiful and it is gripping in equal measure and um, absolutely amazing that's it everything's alive by slow dive Guys, the next bands don't need any kind of introduction. It's Chaos AD by the mighty Sepultura, the seminal and 
utterly influential thrash masters from Brazil and the former home of the Cavalera Brothers. Um, this album is by far and away my favourite Sepultura release. Um, I think this is when the band could still be considered just like a purely thrash band. Like they hadn't they hadn't done Roots yet. There was no groove. There was no um, new metal kind of vibes going on. This was still your pure thrashing good album. Um, this album is absolutely worthy of its own episode of the albums that made me and i'll probably absolutely do that so i won't spend too much time talking about it but um, just know that it's heavy it's thrashing it's ingenious and it is well worth a listen and um, this is actually the anniversary press as well so it has a second lp uh, with a lot of bonus tracks so it's got like um instrumentals of the tracks it's got a whole live section on them um, the on side d really 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 brilliant and um, chaos ad by sepultura absolutely legendary and must own album Another repress from another legendary band. Um, this is a repress of Converge's legendary 2009 album, Axe to Fall. Um, anyone with a passing interest in metal should surely know who Converge are now. Um, they were, they are, they are <laughs> a legendary hardcore band, slight metalcore, kind of did a lot of influence on that, that kind of sphere. Um, this album is a spiralling, dizzying and utterly hammering slice of melodic hardcore. Um, it's breakneck it goes along at like a thundering pace it's all buzzing guitars pounding drums absolutely remorseless breakdowns and howls of sorrow and rage it is just such a good good album uh, i actually came to converge quite late in life um i, I think it was um when they, when they released um a, a single tier that i started to get into converge but look well, absolutely absolutely love these guys so 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 good go check it out axe to fall by converge my favourite Lovecraftian tech deadheads from Germany have absolutely done it again. The mad lads from Sulphur Aeon smash it out of the park with seven crowns and seven seals. An absolutely enormous star scraping slab of progressive death metal magnificence. It's thundering, it's astral, it's eldritch, um, it's absolutely bloody barmy. <laughs> this album twists and turns like the labyrinthian mind of Azatoth himself. Um, along with their usual um, absolutely blistering prog tech death lunacy. They've also started to add hints of Gojira, which I actually really, really like. Um, you can really hear kind of that influence picking up there, but um, it's no bad thing at all. Um, I would strongly recommend that if you even have a, a slight interest in death metal or progressive metal, Sulphur Aeons, Seven Crowns for Seven Seals, absolutely check it out. Mwah! Wonderful album. This video is actually maybe asked the question, do, do I like hardcore? Do I like post-hardcore? I think the evidence of this video suggests that I do. Um, this is a wonderful post-hardcore release from the UK. Uh, Svalbard's uh, The Weight of the Mask. Um, um, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, I first heard these guys in 2018 with their uh, track Revenge Porn and I've been a devout advocate of them ever since. They're just so, so good. Uh, the Weight of the Mask, it's purposeful, it's melodic, it's abrasive and it's a beautiful in equal parts. Um, it's, just, it's just such a, a listenable like a, a, an album you just want to listen to over and over again. Um, it wears its hardcore and also slightly progressive elements on its sleeves, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, another solid, solid release from Svalbard. Um, I feel these guys are destined for really, really big things. Just really, really outstanding. That's The Weight of the Mask by Svalbard. Absolutely wonderful. I love albums that um, act as like um, almost modern artifacts into a band's history, almost like a snapshot of what could have been for a band. And I um, mean, this next album is totally that. It's uh, the Goat Lord uh, by Dark Throne, the recent repress. Um, for those unaware, this is the the second album by Dark Throne. Back when they were more of a death metal band, uh, before before stuff like Transylvanian Hunger, and they embraced that whole second wave of uh, black metal. Um, this is Dark Throne post Soul Side Journey. Um, um, it's closer to death and traditional metal than black metal. Um, this is when the band were also a full four-piece and not just the legendary duo of Fenris and Nocturnal Culto. Um, this album is it's, it's a mid-pace, blistering bit of kind of tech death. I don't want to say tech death. It's not overly technical, but like progressive death metal. Um, it's genuinely enthralling to hear 
the bad in this phase of their career. It's also really, really good to hear them speaking to each other, like before the tracks begin. It gives a kind of um, rehearsal space vibe, which is really good. And just look at this pressing. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Like nuclear yellow. I absolutely love it. Um, Goat Lord well deserves a place on the shelf of any self respecting Dark Throne fan. And I would say any self respecting Black Metal fan should, should add this to their collection. So, yeah, Goat Lord, the new repress um, of. Um, Dark Throne's second album. Absolutely wonderful. Num 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 num. Delicious. Eat all day. It wouldn't be an episode of What's Spinning without some absolutely crippling and harrowing doom. And um, and Nun's Inevitable brings that in absolute speed. It's utterly devastating and crushing. Um, I've been an avid fan of Nun since I heard Damp Chill of Life last year. And Inevitable it, it, it does not disappoint in any way, shape or form. It is total suffocating atmosphere, howling despair, and there's a surprisingly melodic bent, um, uh, some bits of like depressive black metal and melodic black metal in there as well. Um, it is a wonderfully bleak and mournful release. Um, absolutely breathtaking. I cannot say enough good things about none. None are absolutely wonderful, and I think you should go listen to them. That's Inevitable by None. Really, really good. So as you've probably taken away um, already, there have been some absolutely amazing represses over the past couple of months. And I was so happy to see that these albums got repressed. Doomsday Machine and Anthems of Rebellion by Arch Enemy. I love these albums. These albums were absolutely the pillars of my early 20s. I had a whole Swedish melodic death metal phase for about five years and these guys featured absolutely prominently. Um, they dominated my life when I first heard them. Um, I became a Steel Warp, Michael Amit, Devotee. Still am to this day. absolutely love his guitar style. Um, these are razor sharp slices of dual guitar and blistering double kick brilliance um, and anyone with a passing interest in Swedish melodic death metal should absolutely own these and um, that's Anthems of Rebellion and Doomsday Machine by Arch Enemy. Rather, rather lovely. Another monstrously amazing repress, um, the 15th anniversary pressing of the mighty Obzin by everyone's favourite mathematical monsters, Mashuga. I actually got this on Amazon and I was deeply surprised because the, the pressing is outstanding. Um, this album is, much like all of Mashuga's albums, this album is heavy, it's clever, it's breathtaking and it famously gave every single drummer in the world a collective aneurysm when they first heard Bleeds. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been 15 years since Bleeds first came out. Like um, it, it felt like such a, a an epoch defining track um, for a lot of people. Um, this is an absolutely essential album, not just for, for Mashuga fans, but for metal fans in general. Obsum by Mashuga, such a brutally breathtaking album. Absolutely, go get yourself a copy. Told you this was a good time for represses, as it's another one. Um, it's Reroute to Remain by In Flames. Another, I was overjoyed to see this in my friendly local record store. Um, immediate purchase when I saw it. Um, along with Arch Enemy and Soil Work, In Flames formed like my holy trinity of Swedish melodic death metal obsession. Um, and Reroute to Remain was a daily listen for like five years. Um, I still listen to it routinely even now. Um, I think everyone remembers where they were the first time they heard Cloud Connected. It's just such a good track. Check this pressing, check this, uh, this, um, check this um, engraving. It's so, so good. It is wonderful. Um, the songs are catchy, they're anthemic, uh, and they're immaculately produced. Um, another, I would say another completely essential release, um, and absolutely another future, the albums that made me video. Um, yeah, reroute to the main, in flames, snazzy. As far away from the melody and razor sharp production that I've been talking about all through this episode, um, this next release is a harrowing bit of crushing, bleak and 
Filthy Doom. It is Canate's self-titled album. Um, another uh, record by the master himself, Stephen O'Malley, and his not-so-merry <laughs> band of men. Um, this is haunting and grim and monstrous doom. Um, it's all feedback, pounding rhythms, and absolutely uh, monstrous and gurgled loathing. Um, it is such, such a good record. Um, they actually released two represses, so they did, uh, released this one, and I think it's Canate's second album they they released as well but this one this one's pretty much my my favorite canate record so uh yes yeah, so when they announced this absolutely jumped on it straight away um it'll not be for everybody it is a tough it is a difficult listen but um yeah if you like your doom filthy and you like it grimy then yeah canate by canate brilliant this album is the shit. This is Fatal by the Night Eternal. Absolutely victorious heavy metal goodness from Germany. Um, it's <laughs> it's amazing. It's over the top. It's wonderfully produced. It's inventive, and the vocals from Ricardo Baum are are amazing. They're just so powerful. There's a there's a real Ronnie James Dio vibe to the vocals. It's a proper lung emptying sing along kind of record. Um, all big vocal lines, enormous choruses, and, and lightning lick solos. It is utterly brilliant. I cannot praise this enough. These guys deserve to be absolutely enormous. Um, that was Fatal by the Night Eternal. Um, absolutely, absolutely check them out. This next one isn't a repress, but it's one that has been on my record bucket list for absolutely years. Um, Asa by the mighty, mighty enslaved. Um, I think anyone who has watched my uh, Rune video um, for on the albums that made me knows what high esteem I hold enslaved in. Um, and after many, many years of searching, I finally got a really good deal on Discogs. Um, this is an utterly essential bit of Enslaved's history. Um, I would say along with Vertebrae and Run, it forms like their, their monochrome kind of phase, kind of when they were going from raw black metal to truly progressive metal. Um, it's absolutely bloody brilliant. It's such such a good record. Um, I can't say enough good things about Enslaved. They are absolutely one of the pillars of my my, my, my love of music and um, they're just so so good and this is a this is a career high point and a career of constant high points so so yeah um absolutely love it love it love it love it isa by enslaved i'm so glad that i own this record now so there were two really strong contenders for albums of october and november so album of the month um, and it was literally uh, neck and neck just as I was writing the script for this video um, and one of the big front runners for album of the month was the truly majestic Reverend Kristen Michael Hater and Saved. Um, leaving behind the misanthropic fury and the sheer industrial noise and discomfort of Lingua Ignota, um, Kristen has embraced uh, something altogether um, a bit more immersive and a bit more progressive. I, I know Lingua Ignota's albums are super <laughs> immersive but like this is much more um, this is much more progressive in scope so um, it's a set of traditional Christian theme songs played acoustically and featuring um, Kristen's absolutely inimitable and absolutely beautiful vocals um, the album is framed as a, a, a haunting and quite uncomfortable audio documentary of um, a Christian aligned cult um, and at times it's sumptuously beautiful and at others it is really deeply uncomfortable and haunting and really difficult to listen to um, it is, it's, it's, um, it's amazing it's conceptually such a brilliant record um, it truly is an experience from start to finish it's one of those records where you really have to start from the, the beginning and listen to the end there's no like i'm going to pull out and listen to this one track you should listen to the whole thing in a winner um, you, you'll still be discovering new things with every single listen um, admittedly there was one bit of me that was a bit a bit a, a bit sad and a bit afraid when uh, Kristen said she was going to leave Lingua Ignota behind but now having heard her Reverend Kristen Michael Hater material um, absolutely amazing C can't wait to hear more of this so that is that's saved by Reverend Kristen Michael Hater absolutely staggeringly brilliant absolutely give it a listen there is nothing to see here, just simply Emily Brune dropping yet another amazing Merker release like it's no big deal. <laughs> Spine by Merker is absolutely my record of the month. Um, just so, so, so wonderful. Um, it absolutely... <sighs> 
it's hard to describe how much I love this record. Um, it builds on the Ragnarok soundtrack material that she recently done, um, and also builds on concepts from her previous albums, um, and it forges it into something that um, goes just beyond black metal with a slight folk tinge to something that is so many different things all at once, and actually exceeds that kind of raw black metal that she had in her previous releases. Um, there's, there's for example, there's traditional metal, there's folk, there's black metal, but there's also bits of rock, um, Icelandic pop as well, um, and everything in between. It's just such a, it's a, it's a well-formed record. It's not like a, a specific genre with slight hints of other genres. It's all these different genres and styles blended into a record that is 100% purely murker. Um, it's a wonderful cacophony. Um, I, 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 I just really, really, really love it. Um, Folk Sange was my album of the year when it came out. And um, yes, yeah, Spine is a, a worthy contender for album of 2023. Um, so yes, absolutely wonderful. Um, I love everything Amelie puts her name to. And yeah, this just continues that trend. So Spine by Merker, um, absolutely brilliant. Record of October and November. Go give it a listen. Yada, yada, yada. Thanks for watching, guys. Go check it out. All that good jazz. Anytime. I know my way around the studio. <laughs>